So for this video, I'm just going to kind of talk over the time lapse a little bit. Um, uh, there, I actually added a matte cap shader uh, to make the entire underlying model um, one uniform color. Uh, and then I usually start out uh, in the wheel arches and build off of those. Um, the reason behind that is because usually your edge flow and designs have to somehow blend into the wheel arches at some point. So that's where I like to start out. Um, and get the toughest areas done first uh, and then I'll usually come up over the wheel arches and down the body side and connect it to the rear uh, and you can see here I'm just kind of playing with uh, some of the edge loops and trying to line up um, the edge flow and the polygons, polygons from the front of the vehicle through the rear there and then I'll start coming over the rear fender like I did in the front I try to space everything out evenly uh, just to just to kind of keep everything smooth and then I add a couple more edge loops between the two hard hard lines typically vehicles are designed um, with character lines those are the defining edges of the vehicle and usually there will be some sort of surface transition between all of that uh, so that's that's kind of what I'm doing here um, throughout the rest of the vehicle as well. I pull from one hard edge to another hard edge and start building the surface forms between them. Uh, here you might run into a tricky area. Usually the tricky areas uh, are where the uh, B or C pillar kind of come and blend back into the body in this area as well as uh, by the fenders uh, right in that kind of area. Um, in the front there. Uh, again, just pulling edges out uh, and connecting the hard design curves or feature curves. Uh, so this is one of those areas uh, that's kind of going to be a hard transition. I think I decide not to do that right now and focus somewhere else, uh, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and then I'm you're gonna come to the front and start pulling off of the other the, uh, pulling off of the fender again uh, across the hood and trying to fill that area in. And then I add another loop here uh, to capture some of the crown in that surface and bring it all the way to the front headlight area. And then I'll I'll always go in and adjust things um, so they're aligned pretty well across the model. Uh, here you'll see me starting to select edges. See, these are the character lines I was talking about. I use edge weight for those. Uh, just like these lines here, I select them uh, and use edge weight. And then now I'm going to start readjusting the size of the fender. The rear fender uh, wheel arch is typically a little bit bigger than the front. And because uh, I want to accentuate the rear wheel arch there, I made it a little bit bigger. And like earlier, the body side surfacing wasn't the most accurate. So here I'm just using the topology uh, that I created to kind of uh, make new a new body side um, using this reflective shader to uh, evaluate some of the uh, reflections. They're not going to be perfect yet, but it's going to get it in the ballpark for now. So you can see just by pulling points and edges, you can get it pretty looking pretty good. Here again, I'm going to add more edge weight, uh, and now I'm going to start tucking in the rear of this wheel arch and start forming some of the rocker panel here. Uh, you can see I use the fall off tool a lot to kind of bend and shape some of the surfaces. Um, this is one of my favorite tools in this in this software is the fall off tool. I use it everywhere. Uh, again, here another one using a double sided one to affect the middle of this curve and just kind of pulling it out and tweaking that curve as it goes along. Uh, here I'm going to continue on the hood just pulling straight across you know anywhere in the middle of the vehicle you can get away with using these big linear movements uh, and then just adding new topology to capture the curvature across the middle of the vehicle there. Uh, yeah, and then it's just kind of tweaking here and there. I pull a couple more polygons and start coming up with uh, how I want the edge flow to go into the 
headlight area here and to finish off the front of the hood. So here I start working on the hood a little bit more. I bring these uh, edges around the front to capture this design line and then connect them back through the hood and pull them down to the front, uh, I guess that's the, the front edge of the hood there uh, and then start nudging out some of these lines to get better spacing. Uh, there's going to be a couple bumps and stuff in that area uh, but I'll fix them later. Uh, now I start to kind of pull more edges out and add loops to help start defining the uh, shape of this headlight here. Again, uh, that is a design line that needs to be captured, so I try and start with that and then blend. Uh, I kind of make blend surfaces between them. Here I am uh, going outside of the topology tool because I didn't want to capture the curvature of the underlying surface, so I just added a loop and now I'm going to uh, build more polygons around the shape of that headlight opening uh, to help define the edge loops or the polygon flow uh, in that area. Uh, now I'm going to add more edge weight. Uh, I typically use about 50% edge weight uh, at for subdivision levels. I'll go into that a little bit later in, in my other videos. So here now I just start to pull off of uh, this headlight design feature and start trying to capture the adjacent uh, design curves. So here you might have to add more points, delete points, move them around. It's just kind of uh, getting the best uh, new topology to capture the form that you want. I also try and keep it pretty light. This way I can uh, manipulate the geometry easier after, the f after I kind of get a rough layout of where I want some of the forms to go. Um, here I'm adding edge weight to those areas and kind of fussing with this little corner. Uh, I'm realizing now that it's going to be a problem at some point, uh, but I'm just getting it in rough. Uh, I also like to sight down some of these lines um, because it helps uh, see some bumpy areas. I also use the uh, scale tool uh, in the selection mode. It kind of averages between everything it's selected and uh, kind of makes a straighter line. There I just symmetried the model so I can see how the volume is looking and now I'm going back in and kind of tuning up the body side a little bit more. Uh, I think here I'm playing around to see if I want that to be a hard edge or not decided to keep it that way. Uh, now I'm reworking this area a little bit more uh, just to get a little better uh, flow and to get rid of that weird pinch in the corner. Um, so there I just add another loop to tighten up that edge uh, so I can run it down into that corner. It doesn't quite get fixed and resolved yet but it should be good enough to capture the the design right now. Again just going in and adding a little more edge weight. Here's that uh, scale tool again to flatten out that headlight area. Now I'm just going to start forming this fender. I added a couple loops and used the fall off tool to kind of add some crown and positive surfacing to that uh, feature there. Um, just deleting the other half so I can start working on this really bad transition area. I talked about it in Gravity Sketch. The I'm not entirely sure what I wanted to do there, so you'll see me in a little bit start to fuss with that area. There I'm just building the rest of the uh, pillar and adding uh, another loop down the center of this surface uh, so I can start adding some positive crown to that area as well. Uh, I play with this a little bit. I don't really like how that's going to terminate and the shape of it, so I kind of get rid of some of the lines and decide to add just a single loop and delete the ones on the outer side of it. There I delete them so I can flatten that surface out and just pull it up a little bit uh, to get a better transition through there. Now I'm just sliding some of these edges around and kind of knifing in um, or cutting in some new new edges there. Now I'm just uh, going to start adjusting this character line using the fall off tool again uh, just to bring it out and try and straighten it up. Uh, and see what it looks like uh, as it transitions into that fender. Now I'm just making sure that that edge is completely sharp using edge weight 
and I adjusted the wheel arch a little bit. It looked a bit pinched to me. Uh, now I'm just kind of adding loops that I think I might need as I kind of build this transition uh, into the fender here. Uh, building just straight up and I'll start uh, going back uh, into that door area. Um, I'm realizing at this point this is actually pretty decent looking. Uh, at the time uh, I don't think I liked it um, but I kind of screw it up now. This is about when I start to do that. Um, you'll see in a minute as I start adding edge weight to that character line it doesn't fade out quite as nicely. Uh, here I'm just kind of adjusting lines um, so I can keep nice square polygons and uh, in this area. So you can see I'll just start straightening out these lines. And now when I when I go to do this blend through here, after I knife that a little bit, uh, you'll see the transition is not at all any good. Uh, so I should have kept it the way it was. Uh, but that's that's easily fixable. Um, I can do that later. Here I'm just kind of tuning up that line a bit, and I'll start filling in that hole, uh, adding another loop that goes down the rest of that way, so I can attach it there and kind of looking and evaluating that line. It's really bumpy. Um, so you'll you'll get that a lot. Uh, you'll just have to go back and forth and see what looks good, move things, push things here and there. Uh, here I start to fill in the bottom of the fender uh, and start to form the rear fender inwards uh, so it has a nice transition to that rocker. You'll see I'll start bending that area back so it flows uh, into that rear wheel arch a lot better. Uh, this is just blocking it in. I think I'm going to want to retune this area a little bit, um, but I can cross that bridge when I get to it. I'm just trying to complete the body side at this point and uh, see how things are going to flow together. Now I'm just tucking the, the rocker under there and really kind of trying to find that uh, lower edge. Uh, there I used the uh, edge weld, uh, or sorry, vertex weld to get those two points together. Uh, now I'm just evaluating the curvature. You can see I sight down it just to get a good look at that character line. Uh, now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'll just start straightening out this bottom edge here and moving it a little bit away from that surface and getting rid of some little bumps here and there. Uh, now I want to kind of tune this, give a little more light catcher uh, area, or a little more light catching in that surfacing and you know it's just going back and forth adding points, deleting points, making the surface look good. Here's a bit tricky, I just think I, I started to start, I just started to kind of put surfaces together um, and this is actually a good point. You should always keep the reference model that you made because this is not what it actually looks like. Uh, and I just kind of started to wing it. Um, so it's always good to keep your reference images or a reference sketch or model, whatever you have, um, to make sure you're building the design the way it should be. Um, and then I'm just symmetrying it. And this is the end of uh, this portion here. Uh, hope you enjoyed. So I just wanted to give you a little preview um, of what the next video is going to cover. Unfortunately, I had a little bit of a hard drive hard drive issue and lost the uh, Moto file of the last car that I was uh, rebuilding in Moto. But luckily, I back up um, my work pretty regularly, so I only lost that file. Um, and fortunately, I have uh, this car, this uh, Alpha. Um, you guys might recognize it. Uh, it's one I I built in Gravity Sketch a little while ago. Um, I had already started to rebuild it, so I'll use this as um, um, the reference model um, for the following tutorials on some of my other Moto tips and tricks. Um, so I'll go into how I uh, made a new rear end based off of uh, based off of uh, this model that I got out of. Gravity Sketch, where I drew some new lines and used those as my reference for the uh, retopology. Um, this was the original model exported from Gravity Sketch, uh, and then I kind of morphed it a little bit 
um, like I did earlier so you can see oh, so you can see kind of the difference of where it was and what it is now so I kind of made the front overhang a little bit longer and changed the wheel arches a little bit um, as well as some of the width in the rear uh, and some of the stuff in the front there. Yeah, so this will be the model I use for the upcoming tutorials. Hope you enjoyed these videos. I'll uh, get back to you with another one shortly. Thanks, guys.